afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the eighth round of the ESR ACC Blanc Pain GT Challenge 2016. I am your host, Cole McRae, and today we are brought. Uh, we are joined by Justin Swan. I know it's a shock. Who could have predicted that? Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Tired. It's a hot yeah. day. Ditto, ditto. It is not a cool one to be sure. But we are at Hungaroring and the temperature is hot here as well. We're looking at 37 degrees centigrade in American units. That's a million billion, I think. Uh, 96 don't... to 98 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure about that. But uh, we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll just call it an even, uh, even 100. That sounds, 100, that sounds about right. 100 jillion. Yeah, 100 Got jillion, it. exactly. We are here with a slightly reduced field, about 17. So. That, you know, it could be worse, could be better. Yeah, some but, of the drivers couldn't get their visas for hung for uh, Hungary, so. Yeah, you know, it's it's been hard. You know, travel has been kicking back up since COVID has lightened up a little bit, but it's still, you know, it's still pretty difficult to, to get into these things. Yeah, um, you can see the crowds working at a reduced uh, field as well. Exactly, so, exactly. Not at 100% in the grandstands this weekend. But the important fights are all still there. We got AXRT, uh, WRT. Um, Bouts and Ginyan, all these good guys. Uh, Element of Speed uh, is actually not here, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't see those no, guys. No, they're but... missing, unfortunately. They, they've recruited another driver to their ranks. They had a really bad outing last week, and uh, I'm not sure. Maybe the uh, repair bill was a little bit too high. They're taking a week to cool off and save a little bit of money on travel. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not, not the worst thing ever. We do have, this is our third to last race, so we have... Um, this one, and then uh, Barcelona in, uh, in Catalonia, Spain. And then we have our finale, the Mini Enduro at Suzuka Raceway. Um, a quick note before I forget, uh, we have one newcomer to the series who uh, has just joined kind of off the, the uh, you know, off the cup of his um, whatever, however that phrase goes. I don't know. English is hard, man. Uh, Logan Sword. Logan Sword in the number 111 uh, Mercedes AMG GTR. So we welcome you. Glad to have you here. Absolutely. Always welcome a new face. Um, ESR here is very welcoming and open to uh, drivers of all skill levels and experience levels. As long as you're willing to learn, as long as you're willing to get better, we're glad, we're glad to have you. Absolutely. Have as, long, as, much as, we, as much as we try to emulate an official professional league, in reality, we just we just here to have a good time. You know, it's, Everybody got to have a good time. I make, I make sure at the end of every broadcast to note... Um, you know, while we do like to be as good as possible, that's the, that's the state of competition, right? That's the whole reason why we do this kind of stuff. It is just for the fun of it that we're actually here. And we got we got series for everything. This is one of our more premier series with more competition and the like. But, you know, we do have other things. And if you can find yourself comfortable and whatever, then uh, do that. So always glad to have new faces. It means more variety, more competition. That's the uh, second C in uh, ACC there. Um, and so, yeah, always love to have more people here. It'll be interesting to see how this race, oh, sorry, I just noticed the, um, the chat pop up. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this race affects the running order. We'll go over that in a little bit. This is our qualifying race for the actual race taking place in about half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Yeah, um, about a half hour. So it'll be interesting to see. This is our qualifying uh, order for that race. It won't necessarily have an impact. It'll absolutely help you get that qualifying uh, position that you want for the real race. But we're just kind of sitting where we are now. Um, of note, the entire WRT team has, was here. There was a question on whether or not they are all going to be present. But um, all Mahig, Sean Kenny, and Brandon Baker all showed up. Um, there's a little bit of a spread between them. Mahig's in fifth, uh, Sean Kenny in seventh, Brandon Baker in tenth. Although, again, this is not the official qualifying order. What I want to know is, when do we get when do we get the uh, the end-of-season fun run when we take them on the cart track at a Hunger Hour Ring? Now, that would be a fun one. I think so. I think so. I mean... That would be a blast. Who knows? I think we will see some fun you stuff. Uh, what's that? I was saying, who knows? You listening? <laughs> yeah. All righty. Right. Yeah. So we're getting ready to start here. Green or uh, the driver's about to lead, take from the grid. Seems so. Let's let's get up. Let's get up in on that. Oh, we like have a minor stall from Arjona, but he's got it going. 
A little minor stall from us, too, as our camera equipment wasn't uh, cooperating, but when we're out, we're good. Yep. And uh, remember here, leader's going to take us down. Green flags any moment now. Uh, they've passed the line. There we go. Green flags waving. Green flags waving. We are go for this qualifying race. I almost got too excited there. <laughs> I like the green flags. And Max Simmons, as always, with an amazing start. Huge dive up the inside. We're five wide into turn one. Oh, my goodness. John Aldian picking up first place, but Arjona's not giving him any breathing room at all. Castaño Muniz is actually chomping at the bit as well, eager to not traipse all over his teammate, but and not... And it looks like the black AF course Ferrari hit Dave Nelson, sent him around. Oh, wow. It is absolute chaos at the top here. And Matt Higgs gets a jump from fifth to first, or I should say second. Nope, it's going to be first. That was a fantastic move by Matt Higgs. Just the kerfuffle caused by the top five allowed him to really just muscle his way through when, a opening, when he found himself with an opening. That kind of maneuver will get you far in this race, I think. There's a lot of awkward zones in Hungaroring, a lot of really um, unnatural corners, and I think that'll play to uh, Matt Higgs' strengths. Yeah, these cars are all on top of each other right now. Some contact with the 650 of Josh McLaughlin. Yeah, uh, gets it gathered oh, up. Okay. Yeah, yeah get, gets it gathered up. Cliff Hemian looking aggressive, looking racy, trying to get it down on the inside as we go through these sweepers here. Driver's taking some liberties with the track limits on lap one. We'll have to see if that uh, comes back to haunt them. Wow, big, big, big almost lockup there from uh, Jamie Bayless. And then again, Adam David Brosh. Puts it up into the infield. That's his. He's lucky that that other car didn't go around. That's his second incident here. The race. It should seem. It should seem. Max Simmons vaulting his way up to eighth place. A good start. Um, we see number 404. That is Adam David Brush ahead, getting a penalty for drive through. Yep. That's for lap one contact with the number 442. In the background, we see David Nelson having a look on the inside of uh, Cliff Hemian, but Hemian is getting made a move on by Sean Kenny behind. Uh, we see again David Brosh going wide in turn one. Somehow Higgs ended up the winner here. Where did our home Yeah, go? there was a big, uh, you may have heard, there was a big kerfuffle around actually this place in the same time last lap. Uh, the first, the top five all kind of came together and it was a huge awkward exchange and Matt Higgs found himself an opening and catapulted into the lead. It was, it was pretty it was pretty awe inspiring. I mean if it wasn't it wasn't a little on the boring side because he kinda just drove around him. And Aldean finds himself in eighth, it makes me wonder if maybe there was some contact there that sent a car around perhaps. Uh, that was he was in he was in second as as uh, or no uh, fourth as recently as the last lap, so that must have been a later thing. Okay. And uh, looking at our lap one winners Max Simmons and uh, Barker here, sixth and seventh, uh, respectively. Huge yeah, jumps talk. through the field. Definitely, there was actually huge talk. There's uh, questions about whether or not Max Simmons would actually be able to race today. His uh, computer. Uh, there's little flavorings of uh, of Matt Higgs uh, as his computer decided to randomly update itself halfway through practice. So. Good that he ended up able to be out here. He actually had to miss a couple of races a while ago for uh, weather concerns. Yeah, and now he's out here racing his hardest. So it's good to see him out here. Short field, good points for him today. Can't finish Absolutely. worse than 15th or 16th, really. Exactly. Doing well for uh, for his team. Uh, Chris Stevenson has fallen to 15th place. He didn't qualify too much better than that, but it is interesting to see all these... This, uh, calamity kind of just spread itself like uh, like a thick mayonnaise yeah and uh you know there's some really big implications it's talking about calamity there's a lot there's a couple big implications here for the rest of the season so looking at the team championship and doing the math here the duo and sometimes trio of arjona and castaño they need to outscore higgs by 53 points per race in order to uh, snag the championship. Now, there's three races left. Um, well, three full-length races left. Especially uh, with two the, sprints uh, left. the double points at the end. And, yes, well, the last race is a double points race. So, realistically, uh, they only need to outscore by 25 points per week. 
uh, as long as the double points race, you know, the 25 becomes 50, and they still have to put together something in these uh, qualifying races as well, because this is another opportunity for them. If they finish 1-2, 1-2, 1-2 from here on out in the season, every single way, um, then as long as Higgs doesn't follow suit in third place with his teammates in fourth and fifth in tow, there's, there's a real possibility. Um, they need a little bit of help from the AXRT guys, and uh, maybe they need a little bit of help from the strong Wolkenhorst team. We are up to three drivers as Jamie Bayless um, abandoned their Century Motorsports team to uh, hop on board in the 34 blue and gold Wolkenhorst car this week and will follow through the rest of the season with them and their BMW. So very strong team. Curious to see if they'll be a strong team next season, especially with the two of them finishing 1-2 last week and Bayless finishing in the top 10 in every other race that they've raced in. So we're looking at a situation here where we might have, uh, I guess we'll call them the black sheep, the underdog, the um, the, per the perennial uh, bridesmaid car <laughs> of the BMW um, working its way into a possible team championship next season if these three drivers stick together because, boy, howdy, are they strong in this car. Yeah. Well, as you say that, we had, we had um, it's almost like some, the, the, the gods of Commenter's Curse were, uh, were warning you, even though you weren't watching the stream, perhaps. Uh, but as you were talking about Max Simmons, uh, he and John Aldean went too wide for about three quarters of the track, or should I say, well, no, that's, that's less than one, so I can't do a, a fractions joke there. But, uh, and then as we switched to uh, looking at Sean Kenny, he and Jamie Bayless had an absolutely just tumultuous first sector of this most recent lap. Kenny made, an, uh, Kenny made a fantastic move on Bayless, but Bayless being ultra aggressive, and that's kind of been the theme a little bit, uh, just forced him out. Uh, no, no contact involved, but it was, it was being very, very firm and aggressive, even though Kenny had the slight advantage. So looks like Kenny might be trying to make it happen again as they come into turn seven. Huge uh, move there's a there, sign but he's not going to have us. the inside line. Josh McLaughlin is just uh, chomping at the bit, just wanting them to make a mistake. And it looks like it might be happening. And he closes the door on J Josh McLaughlin. Uh, they looked pretty Bad benign. Bad deal, really, right there. Yeah. Uh, Josh saw the opening, and he shot the gap, and uh, Kenny came down on him pretty suddenly there. And, well, you run out of real estate real quick. Unfortunately, Josh is uh, not having the greatest one. It looks like he got it righted even though he took a pretty big shunt into the wall there. Good news is, short field, qualifying race. In 12 minutes, he'll have a fresh car, and he'll be ready to tackle this again, hopefully with uh, more success. Looks like we've got some two wides going on back there with Silvestri and Nelson, followed by Cliff Hemian. So, another one yeah. of those battles in the midfield. Yeah, unfortunately, Josh McLaughlin is no stranger to a bout of bad luck. Between him, Inu, uh, Shoei, Nag Shoei Nagase, and uh, Rachel Guerin, uh, that the whole Garage 59 team has just been served and, bad hand after bad hand this entire season. And we need to go to Bayless if we're not watching that right now. Kenny just pulled an insane move on the inside at the top of the hill here. He's got the inside line going through the chicane, and he makes it stick. And I can't help but think from now on, out, from here on out, he's just going to leave Bayless in the dust. Um, he got a little bit of curb there. Yeah, I mean, it was quite a quite a move. Yeah, you can just see that that mid-engine uh, Audi just hooks up coming through these S's and leaves behind the the BMW. Makes you wonder what Eugenie and, and Aldean are doing to get it through here. So yeah, I'm not not entirely sure. Uh, in, in the background, you can see Josh McLaughlin actually didn't end up too bad off that exchange with uh, Kenny. He's only a couple of spots back, and I would say barely even a second from where he used to be. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kenny's just down, d demonstrating how the BMW is just not set up for Hungaro Ring as, as uh, well as I bet they would have hoped. Yeah, where I mean, Max it's Simmons unfortunate. Go? Still in eighth, okay. Something, I lost track uh, of his badge. <laughs> something that we missed in the midfield is uh, our new entry, new AM entry to the series, uh, Logan Sword, looking at his Mercedes, and it is heavily damaged on the front end. Looks like they're just going to limp it home to the end of this here qualification race. Um, <clears throat> get some laps in, try and get some track time in this car, even with the damage. 
Yeah, it seemed like they were having some uh, configuration issues with the car. They were sitting on off the side of the track, uh, experimenting with uh, their steering rack and some other things. I almost wonder if there might be some problems with the car. Yeah, you know, you see this all to... the time, uh, yeah. especially during long endurance races when the team can't get out there to help the driver. Um, so they're just shouting at them through the radio, telling them how to reset the car. And yeah. Uh, yeah, could could be could be some electrical gremlins, could be some configuration gremlins, could be some unfamiliarity with the well, car. Well, Arjona, Arjona Higgs, Eugenie Castagna, Muniz are all catching very rapidly. They've got maybe a couple of seconds, maybe five or six seconds, up to Sword, who is lap traffic ahead. We'll have to see how they manage it. Sword being a new entrant to the series, not entirely sure what their past was. Maybe you have more experience with them than I. Oh. I do not. Okay. <laughs> well, then uh, we'll get to see how they deal with lab traffic. Uh, while we are a very much an, an organization that encourages uh, amateur drivers and new entrants, looks like they're they're pulling over pretty pretty okay during the front straight. Uh, we do also encourage that people exercise restraint and be very uh, courteous at the very least, if not restrained. The Eugenie go around the lab traffic to sword now. The lines are being the held pretty well. Pretty well. Yeah. You're right, though. That Mercedes is not is not the best day that car's ever had. <clears throat> Holding the outside line, okay. Doing yeah. all right. There was a was a pretty ambitious uh, move from Xavier there, but you could tell by the body language of that Porsche, he was sending it up one way or another. Yeah. Top three are still pretty close together. Looks like we got uh, some stuff maybe going on with a 69, nice, of Chris Stevenson behind. Yeah, it looks like while McLaughlin, this is going on... McLaughlin went really wide out of turn six. That is uh, going to put a dampen on that plan of watching that. <laughs> well, the battle for first is still as hot as it ever was. Um, I think outright pace, Arjona has Higgs. And uh, possibly even Eugenie. I think that's why Eugenie's hanging with them so strong here. Is Higgs is just making that that Audi very difficult to pass. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Arjona, we've seen has struggled to get by Higgs in the past, making me wonder maybe maybe Higgs has just got a little bit of an edge when it comes to making that car, you know, an extra meter wide. Not that that car needs any help anyway. The Audi R8 is not a, not a narrow car. No, it's got quite the stance. I Looks wonder... like the Porsche doesn't have enough grunt to catch it up soon enough on the straightaway. He's getting close at the end of the front stretch, but there's still a car length there. Eugenie almost gives Arjona the business there. He manages to get out of it, and Arjona's got to put the move. Right now, we can see the uh, the launch potential of that Porsche 911 out of, uh, especially tight corners. He just planted his foot and it took off like a like a fighter jet. Unfortunately, it doesn't have quite the edge out of long sweeping corners like that turn three left hander or turn two left hander. No, that 911 is going to have the the bite, and it's more of a point and shoot car. So unfortunately, when we get to these sweepers here, he's going to have a little bit more understeer. And, well, the only way to corral that is to get a little bit fun with your feet you know you got to play footsies mm -hmm. and uh well while you're doing that you're you're losing a bit of engine power you got to lift a little bit you got to rock the car back and forth on the front wheels to give them the grip up i uh, almost wonder no that's not I, was just gonna, I almost wonder if higgs might be trying to stall the porsches behind maybe give you jenny a chance to uh to, to make a pass but that would be just i think it'd be too risky on a uh, qualifying race especially a driver drop out i'm not sure who that was not, not sword. mr sword no i would have thought so with all that damage and it's not broche and broche had a drive through wondering if it's um, no no not nelson no, he had the early contact curious as to who that might be not baker not kenny not higgs Cliff the Hemian. xrt boys are all here cliff hemian it's yep cliff hemian that he is was, he was struggling very hard i wonder if I wonder if uh, they decide to pull him out of this qualifying race. They're going to have him rejoin in the. Uh... Oh, he left for he left for real. He's out. Of, he's he left the track premises. Yeah, it seems so. He's. He Whoa! A huge dive from Arjona. Around the outside of turn one, bold as hell. Holy crap! No, he didn't. Be, he wasn't able to quite make it stick to hold Higgs down to the inside there, and Higgs was able to get just as good a run out as if he wasn't there. Very interesting. This Porsche is incredibly good on the brakes. Incredibly good on throttle. 
very strong turning, but where it's going to struggle, like you mentioned earlier, is coming out of these sweepers. High speed turns, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can get it to turn in and you can get it to, to zoom through the, the middle sector. The problem is, especially with this arrow wash, and you can see Higgs making some sparks there going over that inside Twinkie. Um, with this arrow wash, the, the, you know, the, the Porsche is really going to struggle getting that nose to bite. So we've Absolutely. got about five and unfortunately, minutes left. And unfortunately, those, the places where the Porsche is strong are also the places, the places that are hardest to pass. <laughs> unless you, unless you can really, really get bold. And we almost yeah. saw flavors. We almost saw flavors of uh, Muniz at Silverstone, uh, going around the outside of a really interesting corner. And Arjona learned a little bit about that at the last race at Donington. Maybe, maybe he could try and throw something up into turn one, or possibly even turn fourteen. That's the last. Maybe turn, turn one. So, so I can tell you this right now, the turn that they just came out of being a Porsche driver, believe it or not, that's probably the best corner on the track for the Porsche to make a move. You think so? That, You're talking about right turn 12, that, that, that pretty 90 degree right-hander. Yeah. The reason for that is you can really get a nasty, you can get a nasty break, break job coming to the outside there. And a lot of guys will feign to defend to the inside because it's a right-hand corner, but that's actually... That's well. I I'll hold off on this one. Looks another like another really bold make move to the outside. outside. Yeah. Is he, and he and just pins Higgs down, but he can't not maintain the momentum. No. Just brought up the track map a little bit. Where the 88 is going through right now is the turn we're talking about. So that right hander, uh, the 111 will be going through it pretty shortly. Yeah. That, so that right hander. Yes. And and so what 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 happens is the lead car will usually defend to the right, which is the inside of that corner. But the grip for that corner is actually a bit more on the outside when you're trying to go for a pass. And then also um, going into that next left hander, if you can hold it on the outside and uh, that sets you up for the inside of that first hairpin. And uh, usually, especially with the Porsche, you really get such a strong drive out of those hairpins that that's probably where you're going to make a pass. I know that's where I made a, a pretty phenomenal outside move on a, a past French driver, uh, Raymond Rue few seasons ago that is a name i haven't heard in a while yeah let's call back to uh 2019 i believe yeah i was gonna say that's probably about at least season three it, it would be season three yeah i made i made that move in season three and it was uh one of those moves that sticks out to me because it was such an incredible move i was stuck behind him for so many laps and uh you know once you get someone in your mirror with the porsche though you can tend to gap them you know it's, it's so a good, we'll... it's a good car in clean air we're going to check up real quick on the 15 and 97 of Max Simmons and uh, John Barker. Uh, I should say Sean Kenny, actually. They were being really racy, and of course it kind of backs off the second I start watching it. 88 got a drive through for track limits abuse. That's Gianmarco Silvestri. Some things never change. Okay, and let's, we're going to uh, see our opponent make the move again, I think. Let's try it again. He's going the inside? Nope. Uh, he couldn't Ooh. decide quick enough. Got to be careful. He's moving under braking, and, and unfortunately, Eugenie behind him had to kind of take evasive action. I think Arjona's tunnel visioning on Matt Higgs here. He's looking to the inside again. Matt Higgs. Uh, there is no inside there, in. Arjona. You better, uh, better wait up a second. Yeah. He's got a much better run going up this hill, but he's not going to get this done. There's no way they go through well, this Well, there's wide. a really tight left-hander coming up. Oh. Whoa, Higgs cuts his nose off. Yeah, it forces him to go a little bit wide. Yeah. Eugenie behind is just kind of eyes agape. <laughs> please, please, uh, please be careful, guys, he says. Yeah, and next time by will be white flags. I, know I, think, the second I believe I do it'll this, be white flags. I haven't heard a white flag call. Jamie Bayless is now under fire from uh, Chris Stevenson. And Josh McLaughlin is right there behind to try and swipe up some positions. I just saw him side by side on my uh, on my alternate screen. So, oh, there we go. Stevenson around the outside. Oh, but Bayless closes the door pretty boldly. Oh, Josh McLaughlin contacts Stuart Stevenson. No damage, it looks like, but it looks like Stevenson might be turned around. Is he? Nope, he's still good. Okay. That looked, that looked not good, I'll be honest, but it ended up okay. It looks like Josh McLaughlin pushed Stevenson back quite a ways here. And uh, being that it's the end of the race, probably have a grid penalty for Mr. McLaughlin. And look at John Aldian having at it against Brandon Baker. 
Click Baker's fallen behind Castanya Muniz uh, quite some ways. So now's the time where Aldian, well, I would say that he would have a good chance of a pass, but he kind of lost some momentum. Don't know what happened there. Peek back at Bayless again, still under fire. From Looking Josh at McLaughlin. that, actually, it looked like. No, that's not Josh's fault, actually. That's Stevenson's fault. He looked to make a dive to the inside. Josh McLaughlin was on his right, and he drove right into him. Hmm. So with white flags now, they are coming up to the end of the race. They're about halfway through this lab. We just brought the track map again. Hernan's gonna have to really uh, get the lead out, and I, I think he might just be putting in cruise control. No, nope, he went way wide, so he's trying to go for some speed at least. Yeah, I don't think there's a move to be made here. He'd need to be alongside Higgs coming out of this corner or getting a run out of it, and that's not the case. So I think Higgs is gonna secure this. Now, what's gonna be interesting here going into the main feature race, which will be coming right at you in about 10 minutes from now maybe less, is that Higgs is going to be starting on the pole here, and we're going to have to see what kind of lap one sh excuse me, shenanigans we get, because uh, it's going to be a tough one on these drivers. Number with David Nelson, who's right behind Joshua Glocklin, who's right behind Jamie Bayless. Doesn't look like there's any room for a pass unless something gets bottled. 15 of Maximins is bending off the uh, number two of Sean Kenny. So excellent race from Max. I hate this camera angle. Why would anyone ever use this? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna get a jump on the uh, on the steward or the um, the race order for the for the main feature race. Absolutely. And uh, I'll leave you here with the broadcast and trust you with that while we get this done. Sounds like a plan, my friend. Okay, so that is our qualifying race for the actual feature. Like said, Justin said, we're starting about 10 minutes, maybe a smidge less. Matt Higgs on the pole, make, making up a great result from his fifth place pre-qualifying. Abel Arjona follow up in second. Javier Eugeni in third, holding off Javier Castaño Munoz in fourth. John Eldian holding off fifth from Brandon Baker. Um... Actually, it looks like he took that, actually, because we were just watching that. Uh, John Barker in seven. Max Simmons holding off eighth from Sean Kenny. Jamie Bayless, Josh McLaughlin, David Nelson rounding out the top 12. Chris Stevenson, 13. Adam David Broche in 14th. jean Marco Silvestri in 15th. And Logan Sword in our top 16. Our, our director, Justin Swan, waving high from 17th place in the pits there. Here we go. End of the session. While we uh, while we wait for this to finish, why don't we get a uh, track preview with our correspondent currently sitting on the pole, Mr. Matt Higgs. All right, here we are at Hungaroring, coming around the final turn. That's turn 16. Got to get a good run out of here. Should be up to almost the top of fifth gear. Got a break for. Yeah, you can kind of see where the track changes in when you break. That's turn one there. Turn two is a very shallow corner. You can barely mess up on that one. This one, break the side of the curbing on the right-hand side. Sorry, the right-hand side. And then you got a break there. This should be flat right here. Hey, director, can we get a new driver? No, I didn't do this. Go break the curb on the right. Cut that corner. Can't run out wide. You'll get track limits for sure. That corner, you don't have to break as much. You can break a lot less than you think you can. This one, you got to cut the curb on your right hand side. Like straddle it so you don't get the bump. You know, break tiny break. Break there. Wait, 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 get on the gas. 
This next corner after this one's a tricky one. Tiny break, coast, can't run out wide or also get track limits, penalties. Oh yeah, just a tip. Break just before the start of the curb on the left hand side. Get on the curb, hit the right hand side tires. Get on the power nice and early. And now these are two fairly easy corners, but they're easy to mess up. This one right here, you can understeer if you break too late. It's off camera, so it's easy to understeer. And that's a lap of Donington. I mean, uh, this is Hangaru Ring. Man's tired. <laughs> Very nice, Mr. Higgs. That was a uh, nice uh, leisurely lap around Hungaro Ring, this track that we're currently watching. As you can see, a bit of a technical one. Some unnatural corners combined with uh, with with other stuff. A lot, a lot of uh, just words going on there. And yeah, it's uh, definitely a challenge for our drivers here today. It's interesting to see how they manage Matt Higgs taking out an unexpected pole. He's, of course, got the advantage being in Team WRT Audi with his compatriots, uh, Brandon Baker and Sean Kenny. However, they were not able to match the qualifying pace. The uh, second and fourth place rivals of our, uh, Albert Arjona and Javier Castaño Munez, uh, rivals with WRT, not them, not each other. Um, they're currently in the battle. Unfortunately, Wesley Stokes, the third AXRT member, was not able to make it, and it looks like he probably won't be be present for any race aside from the mini enduro at the end so we'll need to uh, pay extra close attention to that as it happens well now is a pretty good time to look at the the um uh, the standings for our championship and drivers we'll start with pro the pro category of course, Matt Higgs starting off in first, Javier Castagna means in second, Andrew Burke third, John Archie fourth, Albert Hunter rounding out the top five, Dominic Turcotte in sixth, Javier Eugenie seventh, Sean Kenny eighth, with a nice little rhyme there, Brandon Baker in ninth, David Nelson in the top ten, Max Simmons in eleventh, Jean Luca Deluca twelfth, Jeff, who's not here in thirteenth, Wesley Stokes fourteenth, Brandon Stobook, Rachel Guerin, and Jamie Bayless, I, uh, who just got moved from silver to gold, uh, rounding out our seventeen driver championship for the pro category uh movement javier castagna muniz moved from the third place to second taking the position from andrew burke dominic turk and javier jenny both gained two uh, taking theirs from sean kenny and brandon baker respectively who moved down one and two positions david nelson picked up a couple of spots uh, sh uh leapfrogging max simmons uh, and taking the position from john luca de luca who lost two. jimmy bayless is our newcomer to the series for this race, we're going to be adding a little bit more insight into the team championships. You can see below the team point numbers, we have some delta values. That is represents the difference between this race and the last race to the team behind. So the plus one and minus one you can see there uh, just represent leapfrogging or movement in the team category. But the delta value will represent, that's the triangle, represent how much how much closer or farther away a team was to points uh, in points two teams behind so for example we see team wrt belgian audi club in the uh well, that's brandon baker matt higgs sean kenny coming with 840 points however they they are 26 points closer than they were in the last race to axrt behind so they got a little bit of an advantage with that uh with that shaky result that that the wrt team had XRT has uh, that's that's um, Wesley Stokes, Albert Arjona, and Javier Castaño Muniz. They have 682. They are 26 points closer than they were previously to the Belgian Audi Club, but they are also 46 points closer to Walken Horse Motorsports behind. That is uh, Javier Eugenie and Jean Aldian. However, they uh, ended up picking up a spot from Barwell Motorsports of John Archie, Larry Foster, David Nelson, who now 432 points. Eduardo Corsa, no movement. Uh, cuts Carlo De Razio and Jean-Luca De Luca. Now with 287. <clears throat> with our Pro-Am categories, uh, Jean Barker, Carlo De Razio, and Josh McLaughlin starting in second. 
Uh, James Butler in fifth, Inu Lugoshi sixth, Jean Marco Silvestri seventh, Cliff Hemian eighth, and Larry Foster and Ayrton Tobin rounding out uh, tied for ninth. Apologies, there appears to be an error in our uh, championship standings. Uh, Cliff Hemian does have points. I'll get to back to you on that once I have more information. Chris Stevenson for the Braun category, leading Arthur Belodi in second, Dave Jones third, Tommaso Bino in fourth, Alex Shine, uh, Shiny Boy Sheen. Rounding out the top five, Adam David Broche in six, Shoei Nagase, Josh Horvitz, and P. Spencer rounding out our top field. As far as movements, in the silver category, that's the white names, we have uh, John Aldean taking the position of first from John Barker, uh, leading 240 to 182. Unfortunately, we don't have very many close fights going on, as you can see from the color of the points and numbers. Uh, little movement, if any. I'm just trying to get a better view of the uh, action here. <clears throat> Chris Stevenson in the bronze category took the position of first away from Arthur Belodi, who is only eight points away, but it doesn't really get close in points until you get about fifth with Alex Schein, Adam Deere Broche, Shoy Nagase, and Josh Horvitz all being separated by only six points. The Amateur Pro-Am teams uh, we share the same update in philosophy. Unfortunately, there's no movement, so the, the teams are about the same. However, they do some of the uh, the points are being shored up a little bit. AF Corsa with uh, with uh, Dave Jones, Andrew, Andrew Burke, and uh, Jean-Marco Silvestri are uh, with 448. That's 30 points closer than they used to be to Bouts and Guinean behind with 418. They are uh, 37 points farther away from the team behind, which is R Motorsports, with Arthur Belodi and Inu Lagoshi at 370. They they also were closed upon by uh, Team Strocker Racing behind, who is now up to 273. So there's still a 100 point gap to uh, to those teams. Um, and they made some moves because Grash 59 with Josh McLaughlin, Shoei Nagase, and Rachel Guerin is now 30 point, 34 points farther away than it used to be. Little movement behind uh, Team Parker with uh, John Barker. That's wrong. It should be John Barker and Cliff Hemian uh, with 160 points. And then Team Rinaldi Racing, Paul Hoppe, um, Tommaso Bino, and uh, Mar Marbesi have uh, gained 15 points on the team, in uh, or have lost 15 points on the team ahead. Excuse me. That's a, quick, that's a quick recap. We'll be probably going over that again at some point during the race, just as we kind of, as different battles emerge and uh, we kind of are able to surmise the actual <clears throat> action going on, shall we say. Uh, Cliff Hemian should actually have 52 points. So the pos positioning is correct, but his number is incorrect. A little bit longer than usual. There we go. It's taking a little bit longer than usual to get set up for the race. Well, actually, I spoke too soon. We need to move into a new session. New session usually. Got some drivers leaving the uh, starting grid. Oh, one thing I forgot to go over, actually, in the pro standings is uh, battles in the uh, points. Uh, not very many, as it turns out. David Nelson and Max Simmons are a, are a single digits apart, but for that's pretty much the only one. They're four points separated. Wesley Stokes in 14th through Rachel Guerin in 16th are eight points separated. Um, but back in the pack, that, that generally up, that ends up happening anyway. Doesn't look like there's much going on aside from that. As with the previous uh, Pro-Am categories, we'll be going over this again at some point. As well as qualifying order, which we have uh, captured and uh, stored in a lovely uh, scrolling gimmick, like uh, you see here with the points. As we talked about a little bit in the past, Team AXRT is going to be fighting an uphill battle as they uh, are one man down 
to the guys ahead. But as you can see, or as we talked about, the um, they are, they are shoring up the distance ahead to the currently victorious uh, WRT team. They do do have almost a hundred points still to go, but it's not impossible to say that that could be uh, remedied in in short time if things go well for them, as it has before. XRT is no sh a stranger to success in the past, and uh, as Justin Swan used to be a uh, participant, I'm sure he is familiar with that as well. We'll have to keep an eye on that. The black Porsches and the multicolored Audis are going to be the ones to watch. Like we have Jamie Bayless actually on a check, so why don't we watch them? Whoop, that's not useful. There you go. I suppose now might be actually a good time to get a little bit more in-depth feedback on what exactly is happening with uh, when these drivers are wheeling these cars around. On the bottom right, you can see the throttle, brake, and uh, clutch input, if there was actually any going on. These cars are clutchless. For the most part, at least. There we go. We finally get the setup. That was perfectly timed. Just as Jamie Bayless crossed the line, so too did our server host. So, a quick note uh, unfortunately, we don't have any visual aids to provide here because the server just closed. But, um, as we mentioned a little bit in passing, the uh, Hungarian ring will be an interesting challenge for a lot of the drivers here. ESR is no stranger to the Hungarian ring. We've, we've uh, had it in pretty much every uh, every GD challenge so far, at least as far as I can remember. And it's an interesting track. It is very very inflexible on what cars it uh, it allows to be successful in particular places. As we said, the Porsches in particular will struggle. Uh, at least, you know, provided uh, given an equal driver and equal situation, the Porsches will struggle in a lot of the passing zones because of the long sweeping corners truncated by uh, really abrupt uh, hairpins and chicanes. Cars like the BMW and Rex, therefore, will probably do all right. Um, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of, um, great long straights aside from the front. There are those miniature straights you can kind of see on the uh, top and bottom of the track, respectively, with the timing gates at them. Um, but that won't give let give them enough room to be truly excellent. Although, Eugenie has uh, proven to uh, maybe throw a wrench in that philosophy or that uh, prediction, I should say. Cars like the Audi will particularly uh, stand out here as they have a good balance of straight line speed, but also high downforce. That said, they don't rotate as well under hard braking zones, so that uh, the turn 11 that we were discussing earlier with Justin will probably pose them some troubles. 
but not necessary that that will uh, be the case every time, as usual. Similarly, the Rex of Maximums will probably not do super well here. Uh, he's put it in eighth place for qualifying, so a good result. And it's proven that I, uh, or I suppose, proving that I can always be wrong. I'm kind of surprised also that the Ferraris of Jean Marco Silvestri and Adam David Prost did not do as well in that race. Maybe it's just due to incidents occurring. But they, uh, the car being a pretty downforce heavy, nimble car, uh, should do well at this track. And it's proven in the past that that has been the case, but um, I guess not here. Unfortunately, we appear to have lost someone in the transition between races. We only have 16 people now, including our uh, steward, Justin Sawan, currently sitting 7th on the grid. He will not be participating in the race, of course, uh, but it is he is there in order to provide a menacing presence and to uh, make sure that everything goes smoothly with regards to managing the race. Looks like we actually gained one. John Barker appears in 10th place, so it looks like... There's been some interesting shuffles. Trying to see who's gone. Cliff Hemian is still nowhere to be found. Attempting to track down the missing person, but I can't find myself the uh, name. There we go. Now we uh, the warm-up period for the race has ended, and we begin our real race.
Oh, yeah. And so we see that come into effect. What Justin was talking about, Javier Castaño Muñiz is now in seventh place. So a three place penalty wasn't fourth. That'll be particularly troublesome for the Porsche that is going to struggle with some of the breaking or not the breaking zones, but the best passing points on this track. He'll have to make his way up to uh, to try and match his compatriot, Albert Arjona, currently sitting second. If they stand, if they want to stand any chance of uh, gaining too much ground on the WRT Audi Belgian team. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome back, Justin. We are back. Indeed. So Look at the, this uh, helicopter on the helipad. Thing. What the heck? What? Why is he on the ground when we're in the air? That's the that's the Lifestar helicopter. Oh, uh, I see. That's the one that brings him to the hospital, man. Come on. Oh yeah, I see. Okay, it makes sense. I mean, why not? Why not? Why not make? Why not make him do both jobs? Well, the we're uh, we're we're, we're chit chatting and Holly Gully in here, and we're getting ready to go. Ready to go. Hopefully this grid grids up a little smoother here. Falling behind. A little bit rocky. We're just oh, passing we're good. Lane we're now. Good. They're they're professionals. Oh, you know it. And green flag's going, so we are racing race and eight. All the gets an amazing start. Blows right by our Hona like he's not there, and it looks like Xavier Eugenie is also going to get on the outside here. There's a chance we see another 1-2 BMW finish. They're really coming alive late. And the wrecks to the outside. I was going to say, Max Simmons with his characteristic astounding starts. Is that kid on the red, like a caffeine drip or a Red Bull or something? Like He's got the reflexes know. of a freaking legend. A cheetah. Yeah. Uh oh, and Brandon Baker getting really sideways through turn four. John Ends Kenny up. forced to the outside as well. Mm-hmm. The Audis are getting pummeled. Matt Higgs is the only one to escape any conflict. Josh McLaughlin around the inside of Jamie Bayless with a bold maneuver, but ended up working out fine. Yeah, and, and you know, some drivers were voicing, voicing concerns uh, during the break while we were going over some, some stewarding. So just a quick update here. Um, Xavier Castaño was issued a three-place grid penalty for missed, for some missed contact between himself and Aldi and in turn one on lap two. So he was issued a three place grid penalty. Um, there was also some other contact between Aldi and Arjona, but that was ruled a racing incident. It was shades of the F1 race this morning, although this one much more minor. So yeah, we were, well, uh, ends well. Yeah, we were discussing that. Oh, looks like uh, Barker is making a move on the, or Baker's making a move on Barker. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say Eugenie's ahead. That doesn't make any sense. I'll be honest, that, that Aston's not going to be easy to pass here. Not no. at all. It's, it's, got, it's got the hookups, and when it gets uh, the power down, it's going to be pretty difficult to make any run, room off of. Yeah, it's actually better here than most people think. Um, the, the car is good at going, and it's a little bit better at certain speed sweepers. There's a sweet spot where the hmm. car really wants to pitch into the corner and come alive. It's just it's a it doesn't want to slow down too much. When you when you when you come to the stop, that's when it has trouble. Don't get me wrong, it comes out right. It just goes in real bad. All Are we still talking about bad. race cars? I'm not really sure anymore. But let's look at our leader here, <laughs> Sean Aldi, and look into the outside. All over Higgs's bumper has to lift a bit going into the top kink here. He might have just gotten a. Uh, a track cut warning, I'm not sure, but I, if I had to make a guess from the heli cam, it looks like that was definitely a track cut warning on, you know, for maybe even two there. It cut the inside and well, the that, outside. Yeah, that uh, that BMW was sent a little bit skyward by those curves on the inside. I would not be surprised at all if they were, there was a multi brewing. Not yet, but but it, they're, they're drafting the legislation, shall we say. Yeah, it's a really hard race to, uh, to run and not not get a penalty here the, the the external track limits of this track are extremely uh strict uh running right running wide at all really can can cause uh minor problems we see albert are behind trying to piece together some sort of avenue forward looks like 
John Marcus Silvestri behind, actually at the bottom of the screen right now, made a move, nice little pass maneuver on uh, Chris Stevenson. Make his way up to 12th. Dave Nelson had a move on Jamie Bayless, but he had to bail out, no pun intended. Oh, and it looks like Castaño gets up on the curb on the last corner, and that shot him into the wall slightly, so he's probably got some front end damage. Hopefully he doesn't have a steering rack problem because he was uh, shot into it pretty violently. You can see Dave Nelson actually being able to be alongside Munoz through the uh, through the front. A little bobble from Javier. Maybe that's a maybe that's an indicator of that damage that might be there. He, yeah, he lost only a couple of spots, down to tenth. I mean, that is not what he wanted to have happen, though. Don't think Especially hot off of this uh, penalty pre-race. Yeah, looking at it, doesn't look like he has any steering uh, steering issues in car and. Trying to get a good look at it from our heli cam. He seems to be in pretty good shape overall. So maybe is no harm, no foul. Just some uh, body work problems. He worked on well, the body shop. And somehow we missed it. Aldi and took Higgs. Oh, he did. You're right. I was watching uh, I was watching Max Simmons who had had a fantastic run. But yeah. We'll have to see yeah. how Higgs tries to set up a, a counter maneuver. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. Higgs looked like he was lacking a little bit of overall speed here. I think Arjona is going to have trouble getting by Higgs, as we saw in the pre-race, or in the uh, qualifying sprint. But um, I think it's definitely possible that with pit stops and traffic and uh, the help of someone like Aldi in first, that Arjona could make a move on Higgs. Higgs is not easy to pass. Well, the XRT Porsches have always been strong in the pit stop strategy category. And now we go Absolutely. back a little bit to uh, the an absolute freight train that is forming behind Max Simmons in sixth place. Max getting the jump on two positions, but now finds himself under fire from Kenny McLaughlin, Bayless, Castagna, Munez, Nelson, and potentially Silvestri. Yeah, this is definitely shades of Alonzo uh, no in kidding. F1. You know, he gets that he gets that DRS train, and he's at the front. He's the conductor. Choo choo, yep. all the way. No kidding. We almost saw Kenny have a look on the inside of Simmons. That was going to be a hell of a dive. He didn't make it. He didn't do it, which I think is probably the good choice there. That would have been a, well, uh, shall I say bold, to say the least. Definitely so we thought better got, of it. We got moves happening with Silvestri and Nelson. Silvestri went side by side with Nelson. Unfortunately, didn't have the camera angle to see how it went exactly, but it panned out, and Nelson was able to hold on to his spot. We got Castaño having a look on the inside of Bayless. Kind of trying to s sniff out a potential move. Bayless had a little bit of a bobble at the end of turn eight. And we... Very oh, close, but the, very oh, sketchy. Castaño he just absolutely ruins that, uh, that chicane, although I don't know what choice he had. He was much too close to Bayless to actually be able to even see where he was going. Especially with the, that ass ahead with the, the M6. Got oh, prestigious yeah. levels of, of uh, exactly prodigious levels of badonka donk now i'm curious here we're looking at aldi and he's beginning to check out and i think that's because higgs is the bottleneck here higgs didn't really have the outright pace that some of the guys up front had particularly eugenie Sean. arjona and even uh castaño although castaño's being you know held back in this traffic here something happened with josh mclaughlin and Max Simmons, it looks like Sean Kenny Sean got Kenny by just Simmons. made a move on him, yeah. Yeah, and now and now the, the DRS train is uh, alleviating itself somewhat. Leaving the station. Yeah. So that was a really interesting maneuver. We just saw Munoz diving on the inside of Bayless. Pretty cut and dry there. Bayless Although going Bayless, to switch back. Yeah, Bayless wants to cut back. But it's just not going to happen. That Porsche is a rocket out of the whole shot. Yeah, coming out of those slow corners, the uh, the BMW tends to bog down being a turbo car. And the Porsche having all that weight on the rears just gets that power down like nobody else's business. So, uh, doesn't look like uh, they're going to have the best chances of getting back by him. I think outright Xavier is a bit faster than the cars in front of him. He's just having a lot of trouble getting the passes done. The Porsches really like clean air on that front splitter. And there's a lot of traffic to be sure. The track is not ultra wide and there's limited passing opportunities. David Nelson on the inside of Jamie Bayless, he's gonna back out. 
Uh, he, he remembers perhaps what happened to Muniz, and he actually replicates it a little bit, takes a little bit too much of the inside curb, goes bouncing. John Michael Silvestri has to get on the brakes to avoid him. That might be a, a mistake we see repeated a lot today. Yeah, I think so. And, and right now, I'm thinking the gap between Higgs and uh, Aldian is not insurmountable by any means. But if you're someone like uh, Arjona, you have to be thinking that your chances of a, of a win here is uh, dwindling every single lap that Higgs holds you off because you know he's holding him up. You know he's killing him in that, that wash, that arrow wash. He just doesn't quite have the legs out of the last turn to make a move into turn one on this Audi. So that'd be, uh, it's going to be something. See what happens here. There's quite a gap between that top three or four cars and the rest of the field. About a Certainly six and a half second gap. Certainly seems so. We just saw Jamie Billis uh, undo the work that Dave Nelson had worked so hard for in the last sector. Pretty clean pass, though. John Marcus is rescue now diving to the inside. And unfortunately, we just wow. switched cameras. He goes way wide, tries to get a cutback. It's not going to happen. That was just too wide. Side by side with Nelson, almost three wide. Stevenson, Stevenson now. thinking about it. Nelson says, you're not going to bully me. I'm going to bully you. Runs him right down to the inside. That shades of 2009 Laguna Seca with the... Uh, the flying lizard Porsche RSR. The Porsche was the Corvette, the Corvette yeah. Uh, yellow. Yeah, I forget what the. Oh yeah, big team shades was. of that one. And in the Tommy back, Milner. we see former teammate Adam David Brosh, uh, looking menacing in that black AF Corsa Ferrari behind his former teammate Chris Stevenson. They had a falling out, and they said, "You know what? I don't like this BMW anyways. I'm going to greener pastures, or in this case, black red pastures. pastures. Yeah. yeah, blacker pastures, and." Uh, as of right now, there's not much to separate them in these two vehicles. It's pretty interesting to see how similar their pace is uh, after switching cars so so recently. Looking up north a little bit, uh, Matt Higgs is absolutely uh, getting hounded by Albert Rahun. They were down to less than a quarter of a second at one point between them. Eugenie in the back there just, uh, he smells blood maybe. And he's clearly planning, you're trying to plan something. We have to see how this maneuver works between our Hona and Higgs. There are no strangers to conflict in the series. We've seen them yeah, trade Hona blows. Yeah, good run. Yeah. But just nothing in it. You know, I'm wondering if we're going to see what happened last week and we're going to get another Walkenhorst 1 2. It's not it's unheard awesome. of. I mean, it's, like you said, it awesome. happened last weekend. <laughs> Especially with our Hona showing his nose to the inside. Almost takes Higgs with him. So we've seen. We've seen. Castagna make his way back up to 8th, and as I said, he gets around the inside of Max Simmons. All goes really deep into turn 1. He actually might get passed back by Josh McLaughlin again. Back down into ninth, perhaps. They're side Excellent by side, and the fighting. camera changes in opportunely. There we go. Excellent knife fighting by these two drivers here, and they're both setting up for... Ooh, looks like Josh's... Yeah. McLaren gets a little bit weeble-wobbly there. It's a weeble to wobble, but they don't fall down. He's going to hold him to this uh, this next uphill right-hand kink. There's nothing doing up here. Can't make a move on this corner unless you just, you know, you... Oh, never mind. Oh, no, Josh first. McLaughlin gets the... Oh, no, and David Nelson contacts... Gets a, gives him a freaking... Oh, wow, uh, major T-bone. Yeah. T-bone, that's it, yeah. Major T-bone. And there's... I don't think there's anywhere for either of them to go. That's very unfortunate. Seems like we well, lost Josh, a... That was a very inopportune place to lose it. I mean, you know, of course, that makes sense. That's a very difficult off-camber kind of sweeper. But uh, Josh McLaughlin wasn't really moving anywhere. He kind of just parked it in the middle of the track. I mean, that's, you know, equal parts kind of stunned, okay, where am I even? And equal parts, okay, I, I just want to be predictable as possible. And fortunately, David Nelson was also off-camber a little bit. He could have been sliding. So there's no, two, no, no ways to uh, make that okay or good <laughs> yeah and i'm i'm looking at the i'm looking at the, the 650 of mclaughlin here and he's gonna probably be able to get back to the pits uh he's looking at about half power the vehicles he's struggling to keep it straight they have to break out the backup car in pit lane see how quickly they can get it off the trailer it's possible well they're gonna be starting any moment now I do wonder nelson how david nelson's car though. We know Nelson's car uh, fared. It, he took more of a glancing blow, but it still looked pretty bad. That was quite violent. Um, it's a good thing that we're living in the virtual world, or else it'd be some very real broken bones. Oh, no kidding. That might even be uh, cause for red flag action. Oh, absolutely red flag action. And, oh, my goodness, what a move by Javi. 
throwing it up the inside of Max Simmons. Max Simmons holds. Javi pinches him down and gets the move done. So now that he's got some clear skies in front of him, I think he's going to go ahead and chase down Sean Kenny. They need every position they can get this week. And Castano on the hunt for Baker and Kenny. Those are his next two opposition, uh, which also happen to be his immediate opposition in points. Exactly. Unfortunately, with them being up so high, I'm not sure if they're able to even gain points on these guys, even if they do pass both of them. I mean, even with a one-two finish, excuse me, one-two finish here, I don't think that'd be enough. Well, it's definitely an uphill battle just by virtue of not having as many drivers. Wesley Stokes, as we said before, is out for a majority a of this uh, remainder of the season. So it, even even from that get-go, it's just, they're looking at a, a tough fight. Yeah, I believe We've Wesley seen. Stokes is a part-time driver. Uh, he comes in for the 90-minute races so far this season, so I can only imagine he'll do the same for Suzuka. But, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, he's a part-time ace in the whole driver to come in and get him some points on those those longer races, but he's definitely definitely not giving him the consistency, the consistent points that, uh, you know, a, a Baker or a Kenny is giving Higgs' team as Higgs leads the charge as per usual. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll we, I mean, we'll never know, obviously, because, you know, time travel. But it, I do kind of wonder how the, the, the t championship would be different, how much closer it would be if Stokes was a full-time driver. Stokes is not the, he's not the uh, number two or three on the field every race, but he does have solid performance, and those consistent points will, they, they can pay dividends up. quite easily, especially if, you know, he's able to take advantage of a crashed uh, car or, you know, I mean, last couple weeks ago, we saw WRT struggle a bit to uh, regain some of their footing after having a rough beginning of the race. So, we'll, you know, we'll never know, but I do kind of wonder. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Something to take note of as we're racing through midday here, the track temperature started at 50 degrees centigrade and we're down to 46. So, these drivers are going to have to be making on-the-fly fuel adjustment calculations. Uh, some drivers have calculated fuel for the, or for the sprint race. Um, and even just going from 47 to 44, there were some drivers that had some fueling issues. So, <coughs> excuse hmm. me, <coughs> we'll have to see what happens here. But I'm curious how many drivers here are going to end up with uh, some problems if they cut it a little bit close with their with their fuel take uh, fuel. Well, so the cooler uh, track, they're able to take more take more advantage of their grip and their tires. And that maybe will affect their uh, their their fuel strategy just because they're allowed to use more of it. Yeah. Now, watching what's going on here, we're about nine minutes out from the pit window opening, and we know that signature AXRT over undercut is going to be coming in. Mm -hmm. The question is, who is going to take the overcut and who is taking the undercut? Will Arjona dive into the pits and say, I've had enough of this battle with Higgs? and then try to get the better in and out lap than Higgs. It's certainly possible. Well, um, the difference isn't much, but Castaño is normally the first one to uh, apply such a strategy, and Joshua Glocklin served a drive through penalty for track limits. Yeah, um, and that's that's no good, especially with the kind of damage his vehicle already had. They managed to get him the backup car, but I'm curious if there's any permanent damage on that thing some bobs and bits that they had to mix and match. Oh, wow. It, uh... Jamie Bayless with a bold move on uh, on Castagna Munez. Not sure what he was thinking. He he dove hard, basically like a demon wasn't even paying attention. Um, but it ended up not being an issue, although Max Simmons is now caught in the middle of Bayless and Silvestri and a little bit of Castagna Munez. We accidentally changed the camera, my bad. And he and uh, so somehow Bayless... holds off Silvestri while the camera was having a fit. Mm -hmm. So we Bayless see is through. exactly. So Bayless is still through. Castagna Munez is actually has been apparently sh struggling to uh, gather up speed and take on Kenny ahead. So I wonder if that might be. I wonder if his car might actually have a little smidge of damage uh, from that earlier incident. I mean, I guess it would have to. But I wonder how yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, he's only he's only about eleven. What it's no seven and a half seconds back. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. It's definitely manageable, especially with the pitch strategy that we see at AXRT. Somehow they manage to just always pull out a few seconds, particularly Javi. We'll have to see what happens here when the pits open in about seven minutes. I think he's going to go for the undercut. That's my feeling. I think he's going to dive into the pits here. To me, it seems it, to me, it seems cut and dry that 
that Munoz would dive first in this case. He would probably want to get his, uh, how early dive? I'm not sure. But I would think he'd want to get his uh, out of the way so he can start turning laps. Because Munoz is, is pretty deadly on his own. And, uh, Brandon Baker with a dive into Chris Stevens, uh, under Chris Stevenson into turn one. Makes the move. Nothing to say about it. Pretty clear. Here's a, here's a question. Looking at the spacing, right? Looking at the spacing for this, this front pack compared to the rest of the pack. I'm curious. And now now I'm spitballing here. But I'm curious if if this gap stays what it is, if Muniz takes a pit stop as soon as the window opens, if he doesn't come out just in front of the leaders. Now, I know that would be blue flag scenario, but I'm curious if there's any uh, dry team orders coming in from Earl Bamber AXRT because <laughs> might be might be something there. Might be something there. They've been known to be a little bit sneaky with uh, checking up drivers, particularly Higgs in the past. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean that we saw that we saw that happen pretty nicely at Bathurst, if I remember correctly. Um, so we'll have to see exactly uh, how that plays out. I mean, it would not be unheard of at all. And they need every advantage they can get. Now, at what point does it become an unfair advantage? You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I suppose we'll find out. To me, it seems. Uh, yeah, to me, it's if they can be a little bit sneaky, it's a. Uh, I call that I call that fair game, but we'll have to see if they're they're willing to make that chance. What happened to Brandon Baker? He's behind Chris Stevenson. Yeah, he fell back a little while ago. I wasn't entirely sure what Maybe happened, so I didn't comment on it. Been? Because Stevenson just made a move on him a couple of corners ago. And Barker's back there as well. I'm not sure what's going on. At a moment of bad server quality, that's scary. Definitely possible. Baker is going to get it back, or try to get it back at least, on uh, Stevenson through turn one. It gets the move done. Yeah. Chris Stevenson not going to go down lightly. He's going to use the power. Baker's got to be careful with those moves. He comes back to the inside. An interesting choice to try and go on the outside of turn three there, or turn two, I should say. <clears throat> the uh, BMW is not the strongest on those uh, little camber. Uh, low uh, high speed low downforce turns or low, low or high speed turns but that car has low downforce yeah i'm curious to see if maybe baker's struggling here maybe he's overheated the tires looks like he has some side skirt damage so maybe there was an accident there had to have been an accident we missed here max simmons is in eighth i thought he was further back i don't know what's going on adam david uh, Frosch is following his teammate and no, they're he, making a charge on Max. They're applying gobs and gobs of pressure. Now, they are approaching the uh, final few corners. And as I said, Sylvester goes to the inside. Simmons is scared. He's trying not to hit him. And they're coming to the chicane. Or no, that's not chicane, my bad. They're coming and up he holds the off. Coming so up Simmons the started in sixth. He's lost two positions uh, to Muniz and, and uh, Bayless. Although not really Bayless, it's someone else, but it ended up looking like Bayless right now. The so Max is proving that the Rex is uh, not don't don't uh, don't count it out. It's still got some still got some disruptive disruptive ability. Oh, absolutely! You know, anytime someone makes a mistake, oh, and Jim Sylvester Marcus hard on the inside, the inside, turn one, and the Rex is gonna get the good exit and just go right by by. Wow, yeah, what a nice it, move! I, just fully composed. Yeah, turn one is going to be an interesting passing point in this track. You have to have a very specific move planned out if you want to make that work out uh, and, and stick, that is. Uh, the Porsches are probably set up pretty well to do that just by on their own, what with the excellent braking combined with their tremendous hole shot. But I do wonder if the, uh, the, the Gallardo, the Rex, is going to have some uh, power under there too. Silvestri, I thought there was some perspective going on. It looked like Silvestri is about to rear end Simmons. Oh, but, he came uh, was up it, fast. He's getting really, uh, really aggressive on the brakes. I mean, the the Ferrari has strong braking. The Rex is fairly strong, if I remember correctly. But clearly, it can be. It it but, depends on how bold he is. Um, I, well, I worked with Simmons this week. I worked with the with the Rex this week with Simmons, and wow, whoa, whoa. almost some contact again. Yeah, there was up. contact there. 
I'm kind of surprised the Rex is so composed under that little bit of contact. So we get the teammates, Sylvester and Brosh, uh, trading the spots. Yeah. A little bit but of a little, was... a little bit of tapping out, saying, "Hey, teammate, you go for it." We'll have to see how this goes. Brosh is a bit more inex more inexperienced when it comes to these things, so it's entirely possible that he uh, gets a bit nervous. We might see some calamity. Real quick, sorry here. to interrupt. We're up front, and uh, around turn one, our Hona just had a nice look on the inside of Higgs. Higgs ended up holding it, but they were side by side for a minute there. You could tell that maybe maybe our Hona's gotten a little bit of boldness. He's kind of lighting the fire under Higgs. He's within. He's, he's right up on his bumper. The Porsche is not going to be great for passing up in this next zone. As you can see, he goes wide. Looks like Eugenie might have a run as well. He's certainly got a better line. Porsche gets a little wobbly in there. Still gets a bit a, an, an equal He's having a run. look. That's kind of an interesting place. Uh, not too much disadvantage. Looks like Matt Higgs had a tire off. That might have helped out Arjona a bit. They're catching up to the lapped car of Josh McLaughlin. Or no, soon to be lapped. Or is he yeah, lapped? And it's, no, he he's lapped. lapped. He had to slightly. get another... Yeah. But what's what's crazy is that the gap isn't closing as fast as I would have thought. David Eugenie goes really wide there to set up for this move. How about Arjona? Okay, no, he gives up. Yeah, Albert Hona shows him just a little bit of his hip and says, hey, man, I'll defend that if you're trying to make that happen here. And, and the uh, Porsche has a lot of hip to show. Out. Oh, absolutely. Those hips don't lie. <laughs> they do not. I am... Quick peek at behind. Maximin still holding off Brush and Sylvester. Looks like he's actually pulling away a little bit. So we'll just pe we'll just check in with that occasionally. Okay, next time by for the leaders, pit lane will be open. But right now, pit lane is opening for some of the rest of the field. So I'm curious... Looks like Adam David Brosh is trying to let John Michael Sylvester through, and Baker taps Brosh. Brosh goes into the dirt. Oh, no. Brandon Baker ends up facing the wrong way. Brosh got to find reverse. Reverse is hard to find in these cars. He's going to get it rolling now. Let's see what's going on. Nelson and... Uh, nope, they've all passed. Him. They are they're well behind. David Brosh gets the car stuck in the grass and uh, toes to the pits. Uh, I think that's a bit of frustration there, considering he was still in ninth place. When that incident and, happened, and he and has also he wasn't that far entirely. Wow, a complete retirement. Oh, that 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 might be a premature maneuver. I think his uh, crew chief is going to be a little frustrated. He might have to have a few words with him because he was not even far away from the the, the pit the the pit opening. Yeah, I mean, if it was damaged, it would have gotten fixed in the pits, but the contact was very light. He he went for a really awkward braking maneuver. It, it looked like he was trying to let Silvestri through. And in doing so, the car behind Baker kind of had a weird checkup there. And I, it's I, Baker is pitting right now. Uh, it's it's hard to blame Baker for the contact because it was such an odd maneuver. He went out, he went in, he went out, he went in, and um, it's and there a chance to shake it all about. Absolutely. By the way, Xavier Castaño Muniz, as we thought, dove into the pits the moment it was open. He has nothing but clear skies ahead of him, free open air, fresh tires. 30 minutes of fuel to take him to the end of this race. 33 minutes of fuel to take him to the end of this race here. And we're going to see what he kind of laps he can put together now that he's finally got himself a breath of fresh air. And with no one else taking the pits other than Baker this lap, uh, nope. and with all of his competition we, we have, ahead uh, of we have him. We Porsche. That's me. Oh, that's you. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, Arjona. No, it is Arjona. Arjona's, Arjona's in, in now. Arjona's yeah, okay. in now. Okay. Sorry, I thought I thought you were talking about my car that was in the pits. I didn't see No, I, I, I saw something in. moving, but then I, I, was, I second-guessed myself. So, uncharacteristically... Something happened to Josh McLaughlin here. Oh, he lets the leaders by. He goes nice and wide there, lets him through. So, you've raced with them a lot. Uh, how would you say Arjona is in comparison... Uh, to how he is, so how would you see how he is to uh, racing alone in comparison to racing with others, like applying pressure and that kind of stuff? I think he's great at applying pressure, and, and honestly, he's a great driver. I think when it comes pound for pound, uh, which track him and Xavier um, are better at, it just depends on the track. You know, the, usually, though, um, I would say... It's a 60-40 split where Arjona is a little bit faster on average than Xavier on, uh, you know, on a roll of the dice of what track you land on. But I will say I think, I think Xavier has a little bit more side-by-side -side power than Arjona does. Not to say that Arjona is a, is is a is a slouch, is not a good driver. Not to say that at all. But I yeah. think 
when we find Xavier stuck in traffic, he tends to find a gap and he makes it stick and he gets the squeeze or he gets, you know, he, he gets his car in a position where he's able to get his nose in there and make the move stick. And as we saw at Silverstone, and now we're seeing this week, Arjona has a lot of trouble to, to finish the move. He gets the move yeah. started, um, and maybe he see, <clears throat> he gets the bumper or he gets the run, but he has a lot of trouble adjusting just enough so that he's forcing the other car to be suboptimal. Whereas we don't, Xavier's able to do that. We saw him do that to Archie, and <clears throat> it, it, it seems like, you know, who knows? <clears throat> It's exactly. hard because we haven't seen Xavier really get into a side-by-side -side battle with Higgs frequently. It's happened, but only briefly, um, whereas Arjona seems to find Higgs at every corner. So it's it's tough, but it is what it is. Absolutely. Well, so I was going to lead the conversation more towards this. I'm kind of surprised that Arjona went so quickly uh, for the pits in spite of the fact that he was doubling up with Muniz, and that's, that's something they like to do. I'm kind of surprised that he would give up on a battle with uh, Higgs that was so hot as it was. And here's my reason why. I've always I've always thought, and I was, I was thinking maybe that you could elucidate, and you kind of did, that uh, that Arjona is stronger in a battle than he is in uh, alone on his own in tra uh, without any traffic. And that, that's just kind of the, I've, at least for me, that's just kind of the nature of how drivers are. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a terrible qualifier. You know, I've, I've never qualified higher than fifth in my life. But I, I can, I like to think that I can run with them in the, uh, when, when, you know, actual racing is involved. And I noticed that uh, Arjona is a similar way, not as much uh, to one side as me, but he does have a little bit of uh, going on. So I wonder kind of what their strategy is with, uh, with getting up. And they're, they're, they're next to each other in their order, but they're still 15 or so seconds off or 10 seconds off. So, <clears throat> yeah, there's interesting. a few more drivers that need to cycle through their pit cycle and, and they'll bounce back to where they were. It looks like Arjona lost quite a few seconds on Higgs here. Lost three seconds in the pits to Higgs. Not sure what could have caused that. Some minor imperfections on the pit lane procedure, I'm sure. Yeah, so kind of interesting what their strategy is. I mean, a lot of us, myself included, just kind of pit whenever we feel like it. Um, but... XRT is well known for their uh, their their diverse strategy, so I'm kind of yeah, curious I'm, what they're going for right now. I'm thinking that they're. I think they both decided to go for an undercut this race, especially with how harsh this the temperatures are on tires. But it looks like Eugenie and Aldian are going for the overcut here, and we saw this pay dividends at Donington last week. So I'm curious if this overcut is going to pay off again, and we're going to see an Aldi. We're going to see Eugenie file out of the pits ahead of uh of both arjona and higgs there's a real chance he comes out ahead of arjona higgs maybe not that's another three seconds so he'd be finding five seconds on this this uh this run here it's certainly possible um yeah well we, then we might be in shape like you said for another one two bmw maneuver uh, i think it was also aldi and eugenie last time wasn't it yep yes it was aldi and followed by eugenie so Speaking it'll be interesting BMWs, to see how this works out. After pit lane here, we've got Silvestri right on the tail of Chris Stevenson. They make their way up the switchbacks. Looks like Josh McLaughlin has another drive through for track limits. He's not having a good time. Barker is in pit lane right now. Let's see where he comes out. My guess is he's going to get real unlucky here and come out at the end of this train. There's a chance that he comes out and the 35 of Eugenie is right behind him. So, oh no, 35 Eugenie pitting this lap. So, and the 36, they're going to double stack. Vulcan Horse is double stacking, so see what happens here. Barker comes out. Just behind, that's not Bayless, is it? No, he's coming out behind Baker. The timing sheet updates at the next. Oh, that's right. uh, it takes a moment here that because of how far away the timing is from the start finish line. We're in for a barn burner here. I'm curious who, how the drivers are doing on their uh, track cup warnings, track limit warnings, I should say. Uh, Silvestri hasn't, and there it goes. Is Silvestri? There, Silvestri getting his drive through. I saw it happen. I knew that was going to be it. He cut the inside of that uphill left hander, and now 
now he's a non-factor for Chris Stevenson. He just got done with his pit. He's going to have to go ahead and take 30 seconds out of his life again. So just like that. And, yep. you know, the drive throughs here are really rough. Really rough. Simmons gonna say, is still out, by the way. Uh, well, that's 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 part of the course at this point, I think. Yeah. <laughs> He likes he likes to uh, burn the midnight oil when it comes to tickets pissed up and Sylvester just he's to take a little bit of a breather I think he keeps going wide in these corners. We see how well that worked out for him. Although being ultra aggressive gets him right up on the bumper of Chris Stevenson. Although oh you know, if he gets too much bolder we just cut out a worse time. Damn it! I didn't have end up, nothing ended up happening. But I wonder one wonders why he's being so bold when he's gonna have to serve that drive through anyway. I am not sure. Maybe he doesn't realize it. Maybe he'll catch it around the next time. So it looks like the overcut did not work out for Eugenie. Eugenie lost out three seconds on Arjona. And so now the, the, the lead pack has spread even more. Max Simmons actually might get a point for leading a lap here um, as he comes up to probably definitely going to be his final chance to get in. He's not going to have enough time to make it around again. And yeah. as long as his pit stall is past the start-finish line here, he will... Uh, he will get a point for leading a lap. So sometimes staying out, if if you're scrapping the bottom of the barrel for points, sometimes it works. Fair enough, going into the pits, we'll have to see where his uh, stall is. I believe he was one of the first ones to join, and it is, doesn't work like this in this uh, sim. And there he goes, cross star finish line. That is a lap nice. lead point. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Sylvester is by Stevenson. I'm, it's possible Stevenson just said, dude, what are you doing? Just have the spot. You're going to lose it in a couple seconds anyway. I think that might have been exactly what happened there. And Castaño beats Kenny through the pits. I don't remember him being behind Kenny or in front of Kenny. So there's one down. And Baker also, because of his damage that he had to fix, his extended pit stop, as well as his accident with Adam David Brosh, uh, looks like Castaño came out ahead of both of the Audis. I remember we said that. Well, let's see yeah. if he can beat his competition. Now, with Baker all but a non-factor, though luckily he's still he's still technically fighting for position with Barker and Stevenson despite all of that contact. We'll have to see if there's a post-race penalty, which there probably will be some time added. Um, we'll have to see, excuse me, what happens here. Um, there's a, there's a real chance that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe maybe something happens with Kenny. Maybe maybe Castaño. Well, wait. Post pit stop, Simmons is in fifth place. Wow, he must have done something right. No sixth. Sixth place now. Yeah. That's right. Castaño has gotten him. So yeah, so he did something that right. Came out ahead of him is Silvestri. Silvestri has to serve his drive through next time by, or he will get black flagged. I hope that's not what happens. If he realizes he has a drive through. Well, he's got double drive-throughs, if I remember correctly. I think he just got served another one not too long ago. Oh, my goodness. He's got a double drive through I believe. I, it, can you even do that in this game? <laughs> I think you can. So, Simmons, I'm correct. Now that our timing sheet is updated, Simmons is back in ninth place. That being said, Gianmarco Silvestri, our timing sheet indicates he still has a drive through penalty. Josh McLaughlin is serving his now. Actually, Josh McLaughlin is in the pits with his pit stop now. I'm not sure how that works with his drive through well, I'm it's too, it's too late. Confused. It's too late anyway. And and Max Simmons gets squirrely on the exit of turn eight, I believe. And Chris Stevenson just blows by him. No uh, no problem. So down to 10th. Josh McLaughlin might have retired. It does look like he's four laps down here. Nelson is still fighting out there despite being two laps down himself. This isn't for position, but 13th is actually still good points. For some reason, we had several platinum drivers missing this race i'm not quite sure why but as well as the eos uh italians and the rinaldi racing team of Vessi and biglino so all in all we're missing a good chunk of racers here today so uh, one would hope that josh mclaughlin gets that car fired so he can complete minimum distance 14th is not bad points so Vesey yeah i mean we, we, even, even since even since this race started, we lost two or three. Now down to 14. Not including Kind of wild, the you. attrition. Yeah, well, it seems like people are just getting overly frustrated this time. Not entirely sure. It's easy to happen. You know, God knows I've I've, uh, I've, I've uh, just retired yeah. from races out of, out of kind of spite. But it's happening with a kind of irregular uh, 
uh, quantity like this happening more than I think we've seen a lot in the recent past. I wonder why. I feel like I feel like we're getting the same four, like three to four drivers retiring each race, and it doesn't seem to matter how few are in the field. It just happens. It's just weird. It could be ten drivers, and three will still retire. It's it's wild. Yeah, well, I mean, that that is also part of it, and people have tolerance for how much kind of shit they're willing to put up with, and, you know, whether or not that's actually shit or just having a bad race, you know, it it, it makes no odds in a lot of cases, so, you know, maybe, that, maybe they just keep hitting that limit. It doesn't look like Kenny's in any danger of losing his seventh place, or his sixth place to Bayless. Bayless is a world away, just hitting the third timing line now, while uh, Kenny is just coming up to the start finish line so quite a gap between them 20 seconds 19 and a half seconds at least um castaño muñiz is doing everything he can to try and track down eugenie but i don't think that looks very likely right now arjona back within a second of higgs exactly again and higgs is only three seconds off of aldi and so th there's could be a fight for the lead here shaping up but Arjona's going to have to get this move done on Higgs if he wants any chance of tracking down Aldi. Definitely. And there's one thing that AXRT needs. It's some it's some freaking first places. Um, they're right now in a position that is not the best they've ever been in, but it is certainly advantageous to them. With Higgs ahead, it's kind of putting a little bit of a wrench in those gears. But Baker behind having a bad race in the 10th, and Sean Kenny behind both the AXRT guys in 6th. So it will be a battle to see who can sort of scavenge the best uh, result while um, while WRT is, is a licking their wounds a little bit. Uh, Arjona has actually made a tremendous time. He was almost three seconds down on Higgs, just maybe four or five laps to go. And so he's got some pace. Either that or Higgs is struggling a little bit. It does look like his car is damaged. That's Higgs's car, not Arjona's. So maybe he's just not having the race that he want to. But we'll have to see how Arga Arjona is able to manage this uh, the situation he's found himself in. I thought Baker was closing in on Simmons, but now he's six and a half seconds back. I'm curious if there was some contact or another spin there. He is Parker? riding on a different... No, Baker. I thought that Baker was closing in on Simmons. Oh. But now he's now he's six and a half seconds back off of Barker. So I gotcha. think something happened there, yeah. Yeah, well... That's a great question. I'm not sure. Baker's just not had... Well, yeah, he was in 10th not too long ago. Hmm. I specifically noted it. So, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Baker's had one of those uh, bad races that we like to f drink to forget, right? <laughs> they, yeah, uh, they, they happen every once in a while. Yeah, it's, it's bound to happen, especially when you're on peripherals that you're not used to. I'm wondering if the kind of pressure Arjona needs to try to apply here is the pressure that forces Higgs to just push a little bit too hard, and then maybe maybe he can force Higgs <clears throat> into collecting a drive-through for track limits. It's possible. Higgs is a pretty cool cat when it comes to maintaining calm under pressure. That said, ironically, it seemed the times we've seen Higgs make the most mistakes is when he's uh, passing a teammate. Uh, we've seen him get into not race ending or even you know jeopardizing maneuvers but we have seen some sketchy maneuvers uh when coming up to the likes of baker and kenny uh either lapped or in in uh for position um silverstone uh was a big example i believe and so might be interesting to see uh how arjuna chooses to uh, make this move happen because he is just faster like there's there's no question about that, at least in this current state. So I have to see how he plans that. Unfortunately, Arjona's weak point appears to be in making kind of difficult passing maneuvers, which is what he's going to have to do in order to uh, make this on move on on Higgs, just because the way the cars are stronger. And Simmons is a drive-through. Oh, and there goes his race. He was having such a powerful day today. That's okay. Uh, I think I think that's all right. It's not that big of a difference overall. He's losing some spots, but you know what? There's a lot of drivers getting drive-throughs today, so it is what it is. Um, he'll probably come out behind Silvestri and uh, go on the hunt for some uh, Ferrari meat. I appreciate that you didn't say horse meat. 
some Swedish meatballs. Oh my gosh, I'm winning so much today. And, and Javier Castagne Muniz! Gets a oh no! Everybody gets a drive through. Oprah Winfrey is out today. Just gonna say, is Oprah in charge of the penalties? Is she in there with the stewarding box with you? Get her out of there. She's pressing all the buttons. And now, interestingly enough, he will only lose one position to this drive through. Sanyo. I believe a drive through here is going to cost him, if he takes it correctly, about 45 seconds. He's got enough of a buffer on Sean Kenny and Bayless, or am I mistaken? No, no, he will. No, you're... He will lose probably back to behind Stevenson. That's what I was going to say. Maybe Barker. Yeah. I... Yeah, Although I would say Simmons I'd say is Simmons already is... in tenth. He... Well, he was in ninth. Yeah. Okay. He... Now it's no, 11th, 12th. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well. That's... <laughs> Stupid timing gates. The timing, <clears throat> timing boards here are awful. I think this is going to be a disaster for Muniz because I do, I can't foresee him being anywhere in front of Baker. And losing two spots to uh, to the Audi team, he's in the pits now. Thankfully, it's yeah. only a drive through, no stop and go. It'd have to be pretty severe for that. But this is this is nothing short of a catastrophe unless he's able to do a. Perform one of those Muniz miracles that he's been able to do in the past, in seasons past. I think he's going to come out ahead of the 34. Who's the 34? You think so? Car? Yeah, he's almost out of the pit lane now. Really? There he goes. He's oh, free yeah. of the pit lane. I don't know how that works. Never mind. Proven wrong. The commentator's like curse in reverse. Only lose, he did only lose one. So he lost one to Kenny. And, uh... He'll be looking, he'll be looking to, uh make that up now he still has a pretty decent sized buffer to bayless Good he's got a huge K. chunk of road up to kenny though yeah i don't think he's gonna be making that up not with 15 minutes to go here not not at all but i i do think that he's gonna i i mean he, he'll obviously be upset that he didn't get that top five that elusive top five but i think he can still be happy getting a sixth place finish considering he had a drive through today for track limits. Like Higgs is getting closer and closer to Mr. Arjona coming out of the final corner each lap. Eventually, something's got to give here. I, I feel like this, this can't go on like this for too much longer before someone makes a mistake or gives someone a, a the old chrome horn. I'm not sure because Arjona is generally pretty, I won't say cautious, but he's courteous. He's courteous, maybe a little calculated. He 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 maybe thinks stuff a little more than uh, than than Muniz does, or Muniz kind of sees the he plans it out a little bit, but then actually you know is is a little more aggressive with his overtaking. And I I could easily see them just uh, cruising on like this. And Stevenson is on the tail of Bayless. I'm not not to take away from that battle, but Stevenson here is is within. A quarter of a second on Bayless, and he's looking all over the place for some clean air to get that BMW's nose hooked up. 88, 88 drive through for track limits again. Silvestri, Mr. Silvestri. Row, Simmons three, is happy to see that. Third, third in a row. Somehow Simmons is looking at a top 10 nearly. If something happens here with any of the remaining cars ahead of him, which still got, uh, you catch a Baker. Fight the short field is still something to be proud of. No doubt there. We almost saw Stevenson get involved with Bayless. I was uh, holding my breath a little bit there. Ended up being okay, but... As the race starts to wind down, it'll paradoxically kind of wind up as people get more and more desperate to make the moves they've been trying to plan happen in a shorter and shorter space of time. Yeah, and you have to wonder if uh, any of these drivers are holding any of the track limits in their back pocket saving one for when they need to go a little bit wide it seems like all of a sudden those things are as good as a golden ticket i mean judging by how often we've seen the track limits penalty come up i might disagree with you it seems like they're being used up pretty thoroughly that's what i'm saying though maybe maybe a driver managed to to stay clean and has one in their back pocket you know they can make that mistake they can push a little bit harder they don't have to take excuse me they don't have to take <laughs> uh every single precaution maybe on that last lap they can give that car that little extra oomph and not have to worry if they run wide about having that deadly drive-through you know it's true i mean 
just by not having a drive through you've made up at least two or three spots from a lot of perspectives in this race. Oh, yeah. I mean, just look at oh, Kenny, yeah. for example. And again, Stevenson all up on the inside of Bayless, looking to the inside in the final corner again. He's compromising his exit to do this. Oh, wow. Uh, that was not good. It looks like uh, Stevenson applied the gas a little bit too early. He wanted to run, was a little too eager with it, ended up losing out on a good exit. Yeah, he's Which looking is... up on the inside in that final corner, and, and it's never going to stick there. And all he's doing is compromising his entry. He gets a much better mid-corner center off here. And looks it, it, like it might another be one for, running less oh, wing than kidding. me. That's the only thing I can think of is perhaps Bayless is running a trimmer BMW than Stevenson. And so because of that, Stevenson gets in that draft, and it's, it's not the... Uh, the holy hand grenade he's hoping for. It's possible. That seems like a uh, very particular set of circumstances to, uh, to, to to tune your car for, especially considering the uh, abundance of high-speed corners here at Hungaro Ring. But it wouldn't be unheard of. Just a little weird. Going back up with Matt Higgs versus Arjona, still within a third of a second. At the same time, I just made the prediction that it's possible they could just go straight to the end. However, the uh, thrill seeker in me wants there to be a little, uh, wants Arjona to have enough or Higgs to make a mistake and then to go side by side. I want to see them battle because the Audi Porsche battles when they're side by side are, uh, I should say they're ones for the ages usually. <laughs> they're very, very fun to watch. Yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. I'm watching this Chris Stevenson oh! battle. As we say that. Matt Higgs gets really, really out of shape on turn six, I believe. Uh, Arjona checks up to try and avoid hitting him. Doesn't happen. Arjona goes straight into the wall, noses in. Let's look at a replay of that. Mega that was damage. devastating. We see it coming around in turn four. Arjona has hearing damage. He's going to have to pit to repair that. I don't, I don't know if he can make it ten minutes with such damage. We see Higgs get just a little spots. squirrely. And Arjona just can't avoid him. Gives him a punt. Absolutely. Higgs actually gets an immensely lucky run. And it hits the uh, the tire barrier on the opposing wall. Just narrowly avoiding the uh, much tougher barriers. And uh, takes basically no damage. He hits it perfectly 90 degrees sideways. I think I'd be surprised if he took really any damage. Meanwhile, Arjona completely 90 degree noses into the wall. That that would have to cause some substantial, at least steering damage. if not Or aero damage if not steering. And suddenly, Castaño Muniz is looking at a fifth place again. Um, if Arjona, you know, falls back, like I suspect he will here in these final laps, uh, there's a significant chance. You know, he's, he lost four seconds to Kenny there in that last sector alone. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm definitely thinking that, uh, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see something like, you know, Castano fifth, Arjona sixth. If he's able to really muscle it around the track, although this car is hurt, it's a very—it's a shame that that had to end that way. Well, if we want to focus on another well, battle, the only one left is between the BMWs of Bayless and Chris Stevenson. Go ahead. Absolutely. Well, I was just saying that we—I uh, was predicting the uh, there to be some action, and uh, and Higgs, sure enough, Higgs was the one to crack, but I didn't predict that it would the the stars would align. I think. Uh, I think I think Matt Higgs has been uh, he's he's been a good he's been a good boy. I think Santa Very has lucky. gave him his present early. That was that was immensely lucky. And sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. It's just a shame that it, I mean I'll be honest. I kind of wanted Arjona to get the good luck out of that just because uh, coming up we uh, we discussed a little bit while you were in the drivers meeting, but um, I, I believe it's a uh, 34 points that uh, that. AXRT short up on uh, on on WRT. If actually we look at the pro standings real quick, uh, 26 actually. So I was off by a little bit, but they're they're gaining slowly. They were gaining. Uh, with this result, I'm not entirely sure how they could. You know, I won't say anything. I'll just say that it's going to be tough. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly possible something happens to Kenny in the final few minutes, um, in which case it works out. By the way, Aldi and Eugenie. One, two. Again. <laughs> yep. Back to back one twos from Wolkenhorst in the making here. Again, 
at 442 track limits. That's Dave Nelson. That's inconsequential. Basically, when you take a look at these, uh, Dips ever got Welcome versus a pro team. Yes. So they just got done gaining a position on Barwell. Um, they're not really endangering AXRT too much, but if they get too many more of these one twos and uh, AXRT keeps having more of these uh, unfortunate happenstances, we might be able to. We might see uh, second place come under fire. They just got done picking up 46 points on uh, on the Porsches. Yeah, and don't forget that Bayless is joining their ranks for the last three races of the season, and uh, right now they're up in seventh place fighting Chris Stevenson. It is a fantastic battle between the two. Beautiful machines there. Got to be worried about track limits on the exit of the final turn. Chris Stevenson up on the inside. Bayless still has the drive despite going wide and getting it out in the dirt there. Definitely a little, running a trimmer wing. A little bit of flashy, flashy of the headlights from Chris Stevenson. Not entirely sure what he's going for there. On the inside of Jamie Bayless. Looks like he's going to send They're side now. by side though. And if his still wing is trimmer, this is, where, this is where it's going to hurt him. Still side by side. No one's giving an inch. They're rubbing fenders. Bayless closes the door. Absolutely. But Stevenson does not. Stevenson's still knocking though. He closed the door, but he's like, "I'm still here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna force you to open this door again." Absolutely fantastic racing between the two right now. And in the background, that is Barker, and that is four position, by the way. That Aston in the distance. You hear that? That screech. That Tie Fighter. That is a position car. That is that is the ninth place car of Barker. And uh, oh, if well. there's a mistake. Sorry. No, it's okay. That was involuntary. If there's, a mistake between these, if there's a mistake between either of these two BMWs, he's looking to pounce and pick up two spots right at the end here. Five minutes to go. Does Chris have it in the bag? Does he have another trick? Does he have another go? What's he going to do? He's weighed down. He's definitely running more wing. He's definitely not going to have enough to get it done. Uh, on the straightaway, he's going to have to find it under braking here. We were going over some moves about how you can pass in this corner here. So we'll have to see if he... Uh, if he gets a run leading up to that corner, me and him were talking about this earlier, how to get it done there. So maybe he's got he's got a few tricks in the bag. Ooh, wow. Nice. Looks like big, big, big Punterino there showing them the chrome horn. Well, B Bayless might have, I don't know what happened there in turn 13. Okay, now I get to see. Can Stevenson's more svelte M6 take it? Doesn't look like it. He can't get a run. No, no, I, I definitely think that Bayless is running less wing than Stevenson. Oh, you think Bayless is running less wing? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we get into that. We get down. Oh, oh wow. there's a little bit a of bubble. spin, maybe a contact. I'm not sure what that it, was. We, were, we just happened to be watching Bayless uh, reverse view, and it looked like just a bobble. I, and I mean, there's side by side. You can't drop a slice of cheese between them. And Stevenson gets the move done. Yeah. Beautiful racecraft from both of these racers. And again... Barker is right there. That's for position back there. So I'm curious if Barker is going to hunt down this this Walken Horse BMW. It's losing its paint job. These And they're going very wide at the top of the hill. I'm yeah. really nervous that they're going to end up getting a drive through penalty there last moment. Well, it's, I mean, we just added on to the pile, I suppose. We've, uh, we're no strangers to drive through penalties this race. Apparently and, not. Wow, like that, Barker shaves off a half second. Yeah, the, the uh, sector, it makes me wonder if he was saving a little bit of front tire. You know, if you if you if you're careful in this uh, this Aston, you can save a bit of front tire. And if you've got it at the end of the race, all of a sudden, hey howdy hey, uh, you know you got something for you. I do. So you're a champion of the V12 Vantage, and I think we've talked in the past about how it kind of pushes a little bit. It's a little front end heavy. Um, in the context, I believe we're talking about wet weather performance, but I think that also applies to the dry. How easy is it to save tires on a car like that? Even it's definitely not well. easy, but it is something you can do. You just got to really baby that front end through the corners. Well, here's where it'll come to life, even though that uh, Bayless has got that low wing setting. Absolutely. Look at that Aston Martin just, just hawking them down straight away. This will be a contra. Ooh, Barker going, having a look on the inside. Gives gives it up, says, okay, right? I'm here, though. Better watch out. Better keep one on your uh, your left rear view mirror. 
Uh, this is gonna be a little controversial opinion, but I think we're looking at two of the uh, the prettiest cars in the entire uh, field. Uh, the V12 Vantage, not uh, you know, need, nothing need be said about that. It's just just kind of understood. Oh, it's at this gorgeous. Point. But I'm and... I'm a big fan of the M6. I think it's a really well uh, put together design. Really cool. Oh, I think it's beautiful. Huge though. I think it's beautiful as well. And and oh, I mean, yeah, but it, it's still beautiful. Not as big as the M8. That's fair. That thing is enormous. Well, that could go toe to toe with the uh, the Yamamoto class battleships of World War II, I think. Arjona is still in fourth place, by the way, despite that damage. I thought he would have sunk a lot faster. Wow, that's I worth a shot. Injured, Although Sean Kenny way. is right up on his tail. That was a that was a Yamamoto reference. Oh, sorry, I was I was talking over you. <laughs> Can you repeat? No, it? I, I said I would have thought I thought he would have sunk a lot faster. Oh, got it, got it. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> that's that nice. Reference. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> God damn it. All right, so <laughs> go to bed, <laughs> dude. I wish. <laughs> and it's okay. We only got a minute left. One, a uh, couple, just a couple more laps. It'll be white flag next time. Bye. So it's pretty, you know, barring some uh, freak commentators curse, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All the new Jenny have this in spades. It's up to Arjona to block for one entire lap. I was going to say, Arjona is being chased heavy by Sean Kenny right now. Oh, Kenny, don't look on the inside, and we just switched freaking cameras. There we go. That's Higgs. My bad. Oh, Arjona closes the door. I think it's possible Arjona could do this, but he's got to go a whole nother lap. It's going to be brutal. Yeah, that's a brutal last lap. I'm not sure. I'm thinking... I, I'm trying to remember. Did you say that... One less. I'm trying to remember. Did you say that that Arjona had uh, steering damage? A little bit, yeah. Arjona shirks to the inside just to try and scare Kenny off here. He takes the outside line, which is actually the preferred line through that corner. Yeah, I was going to say, that actually will probably help him. A little bit of contact. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, that Porsche looks really unhappy. It is. And Sean Kenny holds it, and it's all over but the cry, and he's going to have to relinquish it and finish fifth place. Not, well, yeah, looks like he's going to finish fifth. Not too bad, considering how that Porsche looks, but right now, he's just wishing that the uh, the BMW of Aldean was just a fraction slower, or not doing him any favors. And we're looking at Wolkenhorst 1-2, more than likely, unless someone runs out of fuel, of course. And uh, Higgs Kenny, 3 oh. 4 for WRT. And while we're watching the front, Barker somehow makes an epic maneuver. Actually, we're going to have to try and get a replay. Nah. We need a replay on that. Okay, well, let's give it a shot. Let's see what we can do. Oh, nope. He's still in front. Damn it. It's the most happened a while ago. Barker slingshot Stevenson and Bayless in one fell swoop. Unfortunately, couldn't see that. I wish I could cancel out of these replays, but, uh, oops. They've got one more to go. They're white flat flying because they had just barely been across the line. Oh, really? Yeah. And Bayless gives Barker the go around. She taps him in the turn one, sends him, uh, you know, uh, you know, butt overhead, peeks over face, and, uh,. That's unfortunate. That's uh, definitely going to be some racing contact there, and we'll see how it goes. But generally speaking, breaking contact in the rear, front to rear with a spin rooney there, probably will be a time penalty. So we're probably going to see a penalty for that in post-race officiating, and uh, probably going to see Stevenson, Barker, Bayless in that order. Barker's not happy. I'm sure he would have loved to have kept his pass on Stevenson, but... With a three and a half second gap, there's no way that's going to happen. And now Stevenson spins Bayless. So in one moment here, there's a chance that the, the three cars all finish in the same order they started in at the beginning of this last lap. Damn it, I just switched to the freaking uh, Porsche of Arjona to check on his uh, pace. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah. Elbows so out on the final lap here. A little here. bit of... A little bit of shades of Julius Caesar here. Just everyone backstabbing each other. At two brute. <laughs> At two brute indeed. Few cars are more befitting of the name of brute than uh, the BMW. Javier Castagna Munoz is in the pits. Oh, wait, he's just got done with his cooldown lap. Okay. Yeah, those those drivers were that far ahead. It's crazy. 
So yeah, we might see Barker wow. actually end up with sixth place or seventh place. We'll me. have to see how that plays out in the penalties. But yeah, it is possible that despite getting taken out from seventh, it could be that that shakeup all ends up uh, more or less the same. Incredible how that works out. Bayless, after their spin, ends up all the way back, or after their, their knock from Chris ends up all the way back in 11th. So Simmons picks up a spot. Bayless might, well, I think if Bayless gets a penalty, it's totally inconsequential. No doubts, no doubts there. I'll just <clears throat> give, our, give our audience a quick view of the qualifying order just to so you can see your, to yourself where it is. Max Simmons lost a couple of spaces. Of course, Matt Higgs just uh, ended up falling a little bit to third, but I think in the team perspective, I think there's uh, they got served a, a nice healthy, healthy plate of, uh, of uh, delicious good luck there. Of course. Yeah, not, that not... one was a wild one for such a short field. No kidding. So as you see, John Aldi in the first, Javier Jenny second. The double, the double beamers again. You know they're double two in a beamers. Row. Two weeks in a row. One two, one two. Incredible. Let's see if they can finish out the season like that. The last couple tracks, the beamer seems to do well at. We'll have to see what happens. Maybe not at Barcelona, but definitely at Suzuka. That's a great track for them. So we could see them have three one two finishes going into the final three races of the season or four races of the season, which would be fantastic. Absolutely. 3-4, Matt Higgs, Sean Kenny, both Audis, both Porsches for 5-6. and six. Albert Hunter, Javier Castaño Munez, not the race they're hoping for, but let's see if they can pull some out of their, their hat next round. Chris Stevenson, 7th, John Barker in 8th, Brandon Baker 9th, Max Simmons 10th, again, flying a couple positions. Jamie Bayless with that fight at the end for 11th. Uh, John Marcus Silvestri in 12th, David Nelson in 13th, Josh McLaughlin in 14th, and, and uh, Andy, uh, no, Al, uh, Adam David Brosh. I know his name, know this guy's name. Um, looks like we lost uh, Justin Swan there. Anyway, that is our race. Uh, unfortunately, as usual, we don't have a ton of time to sit here in the chat, so uh, we got other stuff going on. If you liked what you see, join ESR. We got tons of stuff going on all the time at the beginning. Like we said, there's uh, we got uh, all races for all uh, skill levels, all desires, all uh, seriousnesses. We even go down to breakfast where we have a drunk breakfast every Friday. It's a great time. Um, so yeah, visit us, esr-race.org. Your next race is at Barcelona. So join us for round nine next week, July 25th uh, of this uh, of this GT Challenge 2016. Look forward to seeing you there. Um, just come up and talk to us at the very least. Uh, say hi. We don't fight that much, at least. Um, but yes, we can see if uh, AXRT can hold off. Um, or uh, sorry, if uh, WRT Audi can hold off AXRT for the championship. Barcelona and the Suzuka is all we got. I uh, hope to see you guys there. Um, I'm Cole McRae. That was Justin Swan. And hopefully it's just as exciting next week as it was this one. All right. Have a good one.